Alright well, guys, welcome back to another cracking episode of Nomads and Sam. And for those that are just tuning into our YouTube channel, I'm Sam. And I'm Maddie. And we showcase all of our travelling and touring trips that we do around Australia, plus all the little tips and review videos that we tag in as well. So these are 11 of the most important things in the past three years of touring around Australia that Maddie and I have come up with. And you must know them before you step off on your big adventure or your next big lap around Australia. And no, this is not going to be one of those boring videos with the most obvious things in it. This is going to have useful tips and some that you might not have even heard of before. Plus, the last one is going to be a modification that we think is very controversial, yet for some reason is on every full drive and caravan setup. Keeping your food and resources last weeks, not days. This being point 11 is a crucial one we thought should be on the list. The reasoning being is you can go off to isolated areas and if you don't have your food running well, then you will be out of food or water. So we found little tips and tricks that help is having canned goods as a backup, also dry food. And when you go out to the big supermarkets, get a butcher to vac seal your meats or if you have enough room, vac seal your own meats. Yeah, so absolutely. So if you plan properly and you go to those big supermarkets before you head out bush, most butchers and most places, even at Woolworths, we already have them pre-vac sealed, so you don't have to buy a vac sealing piece of equipment to carry around with you. And often, we can go two to three weeks without having to top up food or water, and it's absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad we nailed that one. And it stays fresh. And coming in at number 10 is supermarkets. Find the biggest ones and stock up there. The reasons why you're gonna to wanna to stock up there is they've got more stock in, and also it's gonna be cheaper than the IGAs out at remote countries. Yeah, absolutely. The amount of times that we've gone touring and we've gone to smaller towns relying on all, oh, there'll be that one or two things that we wanna get, and those one or two things aren't there, and it's like a pertinent thing that we need for food. So not only do the, the big ones like Woolworths, um, Aldi's if you've got the bonus or Coles, they will likely have everything that you want. Sure, you'll spend five, six hundred dollars maybe on a big shop, but it'll be worth it in the long run over that next three to four weeks. Must have items for an emergency. You can't start preparing when it's too late. So we definitely thought that this deserved a spot as number nine on the list. And it's gonna be broken up into two sections. Communications and items that you need to have that you can do when you're out bush yourself. So the first one is, is obviously having a first aid kit, but have an advanced kit. We have an old fishing box that is about this big. It's currently in the back of the car, but it has everything from all your basic stuff through to trauma stuff and snake bite stuff. But then moving on to communications. Now communications is the most important thing when something goes wrong because there's only so much you can do yourself for an emergency situation. But number two is getting into contact with the emergency services. And often that happens when you don't have reception. Some of the devices that we use when we go off road is a small UHF. Now this will only cover a small radius, but it's still good if we need communication and need to walk away from the car. Now we also have this larger UHF mounted on the car, which will cover a larger radius. It's important to take note of the um, UHF numbers on the side of the road, as they will let you know what area that you're in basically, to show you what channel to reach out to if there's an emergency situation. Now the next thing that we have is a satellite phone. So obviously this one can reach any point as long as you're not within a gorge or a gully to be able to get to those emergency services. But as well as something that people might not know as well with the new features on the iPhones if you don't have mobile reception is that you can actually send your location through iMessage. We haven't tried it out ourselves so we would love to know in the comments if anybody has had, had that experience and it actually have worked. Now one device that we don't have in our setup is a personal distress beacon. If you're going out alone or can't afford a satellite phone, I highly recommend to get one of those. Yeah, absolutely, because there are ones in the market nowadays where you can actually press three buttons, one of them being an absolute emergency and you'll get all resources sent towards you. One that sends out a direct text message that you've preset into it, so if you're breaking down, you can send that message off to one of your point of interest contacts and as well as a low stress beacon where it will just get somebody also on your list to come out and just see you. Coming in at number eight is locations around Australia. You have to time it right so you miss the wet seasons and get the dry seasons. Yeah, absolutely. We do this thing called the 70% to 30% planning. So we plan 70% of the areas that we're going around Australia on the right times of year so we hit those dry seasons up top and we don't hit the wet seasons. 
so you don't miss out on the waterfalls, the closed areas and the mugginess, etc. But then we also leave 30% of room in our planning. So if there's a location that we really love, because often people will tell us really good locations, we get there and we personally don't like it. Or people tell us that some locations are really, really poor. And we love them. And we love them, right? So that 30% allows you to have, you know, that extra four to five days around those areas where you can decide to stay at a place in long, stay at a location longer or simply give it a miss because you no longer like it. So that's what we do and we find that has definitely worked. So coming in at number seven, this is a really, really quick one, is water location storage. So the last thing you want to be doing is accessing something three to four times a day and having to pull a lot of stuff out and putting it all back in just to get something as simple as water. Now our solution is we have a water tank underneath connected to a tap which is inverted into our 12 volt system as well as in the back we have two 23 litre like jerry cans where you can literally just open up the top, throw in your 12 volt pump stick and it flushes out very clean drinking water because we've been in the past where we've had to be pulling things out and putting stuff in just to get access to water and then it gets to the point where sometimes we don't even drink much water throughout the day because of that simple little mistake. And the sixth one we thought was quite important from our travels is get away from your just typical camp style food and eat like you would at home. Though home cooked meals take longer to do, for the longevity of your travels, home cooked meals will give you a lot more energy for the next day rather than two minute noodles and it also gives you that home away from home feeling. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing worse than going days, weeks, let alone months by having crap food because not only does your morale drop, you can't enjoy the locations that you go to because you're just simply not feeling well and most importantly sleep which leads us on to our next topic. Alright, so coming in at number five and this is where it starts to get interesting and we really hone down into the really good examples that we think should be done. Number five, being a really good sleeping setup and this is why. Look, so pardon my French here, but it is absolutely shit when you're going away for days, weeks and months and you have continuous sleepless nights because not only are you tired the next day, you can't enjoy where you are and ultimately you have fights with your partner because you're just either hot and annoyed or just annoyed. So ignore those people that say you need to go out camping, be tough, sleep on the ground because you need to be more of a man or more of a woman and toughen up. We totally disagree. This attitude is completely unsustainable. Don't be afraid to invest some money on an aircon, electric blanket, a fan, or even a good mattress like we did. We went out and got ourselves a 50 millimeter custom made mattress. And uh, yeah, I think it's paid off for itself already. Yeah, there's nothing worse than not looking forward to go to bed because you know you're going on a bad quality mattress. You don't have the right pillow or it's just simply uncomfortable, hot or cold. So trust us. Everyone knows what it's like when you haven't had enough sleep, especially your parents out there, and probably soon to be us, in all honesty, you need a good night's sleep. Rightio, so coming in at number four, let's talk about electricity or gas when you're traveling. We don't think it's a luxury anymore to not talk about having good electrical equipment on board. Now, we're not sure if it's just because we're a younger generation coming through, but it is absolutely vital for longevity whilst you're traveling to have a good electrical system set up that is backed up by gas if you don't have the battery or money capacity to get those big lithium batteries. Now, everything nowadays runs on 12 volt equipment. So you gotta make sure that you have the good quality gear if you're going to invest in it. Now, everything from your fridges, to your phones, to your laptops, to your torches, Everything is absolutely rechargeable and doesn't rely on double A's anymore. So it is completely important that you have the exact right setup for that. Whether it's lithium batteries, inverters, solar power, or DC chargers, you need to make sure that you have the correct equipment to charge those batteries. Because you don't want to be going towards the end of your day and knowing your setup doesn't have enough conducting power, I think is the right word, to charge up your system because then you're just going on the back end and risk dying batteries and then you have nothing to charge up everything. So make sure you have a high enough solar panel and a good DC charger so you can charge everything. That's a really big hot tip from us because we came unstuck in our early days where we're getting to the end of each day and not having everything charged up and it was a pain in the ass. And sometimes we ran out of fridge electricity. So connecting to that point, Samuel's totally right. It's always good as well to have that backup with the gas. I did find in a couple of situations when our electricity started running low, it was always good to have gas as a backup to run, especially because you could just run the gas with boiling water, didn't have to stress about your amp power and how much you had left. Yeah, absolutely. It's okay to go gas as well. I know everywhere is saying that electricity is the next best thing, which we believe it is. 
but it comes at a budget. So if it's within your budget that you can do it, 100% go for it, but it's still okay to have gas. Don't let all these big setups throw you aside. Now, traveling is expensive, free camps or not, but we definitely think that this deserves the number three spot. Now, one of the best ways to help reduce costs while you're on the road is investing in either maps or apps on your phone or tablets that are absolutely vastly found everywhere on the internet. The first one that we recommend and is always our go-to is Wikicamps. We absolutely love Wikicamps because it will tell you about the real-time photos, realistic reviews, but it will also give you little hidden gems that you might miss along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Like, not only does it provide the free camps and also tells you all of the main caravan parks and stuff like that, but if you zoom out on the area, often you can find free camps or significantly cheaper areas to stay the night around those expensive places. And honestly, you can save like between 70 and 80% on places at caravan parks that are cheaper at often better locations or free camps that have the same location, 90% less people. And I tell you what, it has been an absolute game changer for us because not only does it do that, the amount of hidden spots and gems that we find that you obviously see on our Instagram all the time, that's how we find it. Radio, so coming in at number two, this one might surprise you, but choosing the right gear for you, not what your family or your mates or your YouTubers or your Instagrammers tell you to do, you need to detail it to you. Okay, so we've all been there. We watch all of these videos, we see all of these glamorous campsites and you feel like you need to get A, B, C, all the way through to Z on your camping setup. But keep it simple because don't forget, if you have a lot of gear, that means there's a lot of unpack time and a lot of pack up time. And one of the biggest things that we've done throughout the last three or four years is we do a two to three week trip before we head away. We take note of everything we use and don't use and simply put away the things that we don't use. And I reckon we drop about 40% of our gear. 100%, yeah. <laughs> Personally, from my experience, things that I've gotten advice or suggestions on is my fridge, it's too big, but I love my 80 litre fridge, works well for me. The drawers, some people prefer boxes, but I love my drawer system, works great for me. And chairs, you can see Samuel and I even have different chairs. Choose something that's comfortable for you. Yeah, absolutely. You need to know your creature comfort items. Like Maddie obviously loves her fridge because we do a lot of cooking and that's one of our big morale things. The chairs, because we lo love being comfortable at the campsite. And then the drawer system set up, there's a lot out there. Make sure you go choose two to three different types of ones and choose one. Don't just go to the main one that you see first. Now the moment you have been waiting for, number one, you do not need an expensive setup. You know, Maddie is 100% right there. You don't need a $250,000 setup, they learn a $150,000 setup. Even say it, even a $100,000 or a $50,000 setup with your caravans, your camper trailers, all these really expensive rooftop tents, even like the one we've got, which is probably a bit of an overkill. You just need something simple. If you go out there with an esky, with a swag, with the basic tent, little bit of camping luxuries such as like your good camping chairs, I reckon you can last a good couple of months out on the road. But that's where we draw the line. If you're spending six to 12 plus months on the road, you probably have to go be spending between that 50 and $100,000 range, including your vehicle, so you can last long and not be annoyed on your trip at all and enjoy it everywhere that you go. But whilst we're on that, we're gonna talk about the vehicles that you must have whilst you're on the road. Now, reliability is such a key factor and that's why we have an Isuzu D-Max. That's right, even though it's not one of the really big flash Toyota Land Cruisers or the big patrols that are on the market, we know that wherever we go, that this vehicle will take us. But also, there are a lot of spare parts everywhere in Australia, particularly in remote areas. And you have gotta make sure when you're buying the vehicle that you are taking around Australia, that not only do you have a reputable brand, but there are service parts for that vehicle if and when something goes wrong. We love our D-Max, but we know things like our sensors and fuses always go on these things, whether you're doing river crossings or you're just out in general. So they're the spare parts that we carry. So you need to know the spare parts that your car breaks down of. Throw that ego to the side and know what parts break down on your specific vehicle. The last thing you wanna be doing is buying the latest 2023 Ram 2023, 2024, anything. Yeah, and the thing is, you're gonna to have to travel back to big cities to get those ones repaired. We're at least with the D-Max, and if we carry spare parts, then we're not gonna to have to backtrack or miss out on a lot of our trips. Exactly, like as we spoke about before, dry and wet seasons, they move bloody quick, and you know, three to four weeks is the difference between being able to do those amazing places in the top end, like your X-Mouse, Gebb River Road, and all those waterfalls along it. 
Rightio, so that concludes that. I really hope you enjoyed that episode because that is the top 11 best things that we think that you should know before you head off and travel around Australia. But whilst we're at this camp spot here in Victoria along the beautiful Murray River, I'm going to have a good swim. Have fun on one of these swing ropes. Let's go. Like always, don't forget to comment down below and we'll always get back to you. But thanks for so much for watching, guys. How to swim? Uh, the rope came out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>